all my heart's desire and I long to worship you. Sometimes I Sometimes praise the Lord Sometimes gently singing Our hearts are one accord Oh, let us feel this holy presence let the sound of praises fill the air. Oh, let us sing the song of Jesus' love to people everywhere. Sometimes high. Sometimes gently singing Our hearts on at uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. It is profitable. It is profitable. You see this? Before we go into all the different areas of profit, what you must see is that everything that God will speak to you has a profit to it. It has financial increase to it. Wealth. Let me tell you about the wealth anointing. The wealth anointing will take you from glory to glory in money. The wealth anointing will take you to 
the spirit realm of finances. See, when the father created financial rewards and the idea of silver and gold, the father did that out of his spirit. I want you to see this. Finances has nothing to do with the natural. The only thing finances have to do with the natural is that natural people have been holding it hostage until spiritual people realize that it's theirs. But think about this. Silver and gold came from the father's spirit. It was his idea. That's why he's walking on streets of gold, which is he walking on streets that represent large money. So you imagine this is the father's realm. So when the Lord Jesus said it's the father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom, the kingdom is not in word, is in power. Remember what Apostle Paul came preaching? He said the kingdom is not in word, is in power. So remember the spirit of power, the realm of power, you shall receive power, Acts chapter one, verse eight, for you to be a witness. Well, Acts chapter four says this. Remember Acts chapter one, verse eight says that you'll receive power to become a witness. Acts chapter four says this, that they gave witness of the Lord Jesus Christ with great grace, with great power. And great grace was upon them all and none of them lacked. You see this? We see an avenue of power here that destroys the spirit of lack, meaning financially it gives you a testimony. We see an avenue of power and grace that's not just dealing with, hey, be free from a cigarette or be free from sin. This grace, this great grace is be free from all financial strongholds. Man, I feel this. Wow, 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 wow. So, so here we see an avenue of the grace of God that's dealing specifically with be free from debt, delayed money, the thief oppressing you. Because that's what the thief does. The thief oppresses you. It's just funny. When I see the repo man, I laugh now because the repo man... Ain't got no power over me. Back then, he didn't want me. Now I'm hot. <laughs> Mike Jones. How many of y'all call Mike Jones? I think some of y'all call Mike Jones. Because you wasn't all the way that saved. You called Mike Jones. You just ain't going to tell me, but you called Mike Jones. <laughs> some of y'all was hot back then. The days of Luke. And we're not talking about the Bible. Good. <laughs> No, I ain't going to play with you. I'm not going to play with you. Leave me alone. Shut up. Shut up. I'm not going to argue with you. I'm not going to argue with you. Don't, don't, don't out talk me. And so think about this. There's a department of great grace that releases a flood of finances. There's a department of great grace that makes wealth your footstool. Wow. Wow. There's a department of great grace that causes you to enjoy the finer things in life. Wow. I feel a strong anointing on me because the father talking to me right now about great grace as I'm on the line. Great grace is a department of God where he supplies you beyond your dreams. Wow. See, children strive to enter into the gate of great grace. Wow. It's a straight gate, meaning that you're going to have to be a soldier. Look how soldiers stand up to the general. They stand up like this and they, they got to stand straight. Why? Because it's a straight, straight, straight way is how Jesus used to do miracles. So the, the direction, the angle, the appearance of straight represents that God's order is now manifesting. This is his order. This is his kingdom. And so imagine great grace is even a straight and narrow path. Sowing seed is a straight and narrow path. That's why it's only a few that be that finds it. Many people don't understand that money wasn't created to take care of you. God was created to take care of you. So I use the money to activate God.
Oh, God don't need no money. God ain't never dealt with need. God dealt with need because man sinned. God wasn't dealing with need. Need is not God's perfect will. So the realm of need will make you misunderstand God. Wow. 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 I'm seeing something tonight. Wow, man, there's a fresh anointing. The realm of need will make you contrary to the father because that wasn't his original idea. So that's why when people try to argue with you about need, even you don't really got the answer for them because the spirit don't want to talk about need. My God. Oh, my karata karama. Apostle Paul said, my God shall supply all your needs. Why didn't he say your God? Because God wasn't their God yet. Ay, 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 He wasn't their God yet. So, so he said, my God, he said, I'm going to take ownership of him because he owned me right now. He training y'all to own you. But, but right now he, so, so my God shall supply all your need. He can't go to your desires yet because you ain't fully surrendered. <laughs> he can't go to your, your, your dreams yet and what you want yet because you're not fully submitted. So he going to supply your needs. Look, look at the angle of that text now. He said, my God, meaning that Apostle Paul didn't feel that it was appropriate to pit them in ownership of the Lord yet. He said, my God, here's what my God going to do. He about to break you off a piece. He about to give you a little taste, a little appetizer. Oh, my God. Here's why I hear the father say, I had Apostle Paul give them an appetite. For my supply system. Wow. See, the apostle will always give you the menu. My God. Jesus. The apostle will always give you the menu. So that you can see what you can order. If you let God put your life in order. Oh, my gosh. See, see, saints. Even when you go to a restaurant and talk about make your order. You go to a window. Uh, how can I take your order? Because even the word order is a reward. When you order in food, but see, you get access to all of the foods of God when you let him pitch your life in order. When you let him call the shots, you'll never get shot by the fiery darts. Now, listen to this here. <laughs> Glory to God. It's powerful stuff here. Great grace is supernatural money moving. I come to anoint you financially right now in just these couple moments. Great grace is supernatural money moving. Great grace is deliverance from this world system. God will have you in the world, but you won't have to be of the world, meaning that you won't have to sell your soul to make money. You won't have to lay down God's will for you to make money. You'll be able to do the will of God and still have superior power over prosperity money. Riches is the stitches that God gives you for overcoming financial witches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel, I feel, uh, I feel the honey nuts. I meant honey nut Cheerios. Let me finish. I meant to, I got to finish what I'm saying. Don't interrupt me while I'm talking. Let me finish what I have to say. All right, don't be disrespectful. Don't, dis don't, don't, don't. Don't, don't, don't raise your hand. Don't say nothing. Riches is the, is God's stitches for overcoming financial witches. So here's what God does. He gives you the stitches. Huh? He gives you a patch up. He lets you recover all. You know, stitches is to heal wounds. After someone been wounded to pit them in the healing process, they go through stitches. They pit the stitches right there to, to, to pit the skin. Now, mind you, watch this here. Back in the Old Testament, they didn't have stitches because God created the body to heal itself. You go cut yourself and watch how your body heal itself. You ain't even got to pit nothing on the cut. The cut going to heal itself. It might be a scar, but it's going to heal itself. Skin going to grow back on it somehow. It may not be visible to the appearance, but it's there. Here's what's so powerful, people of God. 
If God created the body to heal itself, God created the ground to heal you in the realm of harvests. This earth was created to be a healer. So when I sow my seed in obedience to God, this earth had a mandate and a date with man. The earth was created to feed you. The Holy Spirit there to lead you, the earth there to feed you. Everything on this earth can hear you. That's why you speak to money. Don't speak. Um, don't speak bad about money. Don't talk about money like everybody else talk about money. You know, you know, money don't grow on trees. No, it do grow on trees for me. I'm not playing with you. I'm not going to play with you, Cletus. <laughs> you you sit right there talking about money don't grow on trees. I'm not going to play with you. You're going to sit right there talking about money don't grow on trees. I, I'm not going to play with you. I'm not going to play with you. It grow on trees when it comes to, to the sonship that I'm moving in. It grow on trees when it comes to this covenant wealth that God promised me. It, come, it, it grow on trees when it comes to this blessing of Abraham that I'm wearing right now. You may not can see it, but you're about to see it because Abraham was very rich. So I received the transference of being very rich. A lot of times, Satan will block the message of the seed from you because this is the very thing that's going to shut down all the spiritual warfare that you have in right now. That, that's what Satan does. Satan will always have you casualize a weapon that can dethrone him off of your situation. <laughs> Glory to God. See, he know when the father is going to translate you out of the death that he's trying to create in your life into the life that God promised you through the seed. So that's why he casualized the seed message. Along me and many others, and those that have, have yielded to the sowing anointing, the sowing anointing, it recovers all of your dignity. Not only financially, but mentally. Because there are some revelations that God can't give you until you walk in honor. There are some revelations that God can't give you until you sow all. There are some dimensions of the Father that you can't even receive. You can't even agree with. You can't even accept until you start honoring him. See, when I'm sowing, I'm letting the Lord soften my heart. Receiving a heart of flesh through sowing. Wow. Remember I told you a revelation about flesh. If you take uh, the H out of flesh, you flip it around, you get self. So when God gives me a heart of flesh, what you want to see is this. God is giving me a heart where he is able to dominate self. He's able to overthrow self. Self will yield to him. In this realm, God gives you the heart of flesh. So now God gives you the self that you really were supposed to be. Wow. Think about this, people of God. He give you the, the self that you were supposed to be before Adam sinned, before there was an acceptance of corruption, before there was an entertaining. So... The fact that God is giving me this heart of flesh, it shows me that this heart of flesh is not the devil's realm. This heart of flesh is the way that God intended me to be wrapped in this flesh mentally. My responses, my lifestyle, my diligence, my continuance, my endurance, my salvation, my wisdom. No demon has found out how to stop someone that's honoring God. There's not an evil spirit that can stop someone that has made up in their mind that they're going to sow their way out. There's no demon that can stop anyone that has made up their mind to do that. Demons do not have the authority to stop a sower.
Now, I want to say this to you. You have to learn how to sow the word before you can sow money correctly. You know why? Because in the sowing of money, only the sowing of word is going to activate it and keep it in its proper position. The sowing of money will die down if you're not a sower of the word. Here's what sow of the word means. It means that you're a doer of the word. Because if I'm doing the word, I'm going to understand that I'm not just giving money. This is a part of what God likes. This is what he loves. This is what his word has given me the, the knowledge that's going to change the atmosphere I'm in, the season I'm in, the environment I'm in. Because a harvest is the cancellation of a storm. Wait, 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 wait. A harvest is a cancellation of a storm. It's the cancellation of a storm. These are some wisdom doors. You can write this stuff down. A harvest is God stopping the devil. A harvest is a divine rebuke from the father to every demon that's challenging you. A harvest is a divine rebuke. Saints, look, look what the Bible said. I rebuke the devourer for your sake. So God's saying, I'm going to open up the windows. I'm going to give you a harvest, pour you out a blessing, give you a harvest, and watch what it's going to do. Rebuke the devourer. See, I'm in the text. My God. Jesus. A harvest is a divine rebuke. A harvest destroys every spirit challenging you mentally, physically, financially. In every department of your life, it comes saturated by the glory and the anointing of the spirit when you're sowing into your God. Now, why does God pick a man of God to be your soul? What's the purpose behind that? Because your man of God is in a agree. Your man of God is full of the word. So when you sow into your man of God, you're sowing into the word. And that's why prophecies come to pass. That's why promises come to pass. Because the word is inside of that man of God. That man of God is full of the word. So when you're sowing into them, it's hard for you not to reap a harvest that's full of the word. Your man of God is of God. So mean that the substance of God has taken over his existence. And so when you sow into your man of God, you're letting the substance of God overtake you. And so that's why your mind changes and that's why your money changes. Because Proverbs 8, the wisdom angel says she'll cause you to inherit substance. So the substance of God in the man of God overtakes you for you to have the substance of God in your mind, the substance of God in your body, the substance of God in your finances. You receive the substance of God. It goes from mentality. It goes down into money. My cup running over. So even when I'm sowing, I give my cup legs. Oh, Jesus. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I, done, I done got ahead of myself. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> I, I pit legs on my cup. My cup was just a cup. But when I'm sowing, I give my cup legs and my cup start running. Oh, Jesus. You never saw it. You never heard that day in your life. My cup, it start running. And all of a sudden, now my cup is running over. So it's trampling the serpent and the scorpion underfoot. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah! Jesus, I'm about to break the rules. I'm about to break the rule. Ay, 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 ay. Ay, 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 ay. So, so my seed takes my cup into a metamorphosis and I put legs on my cup. Now my cup is able to run. See, saints, I want to say this to you. 
This is why you have to learn how to run and not be weary. Because that is the opposite. If you're running, you kill weariness now. Here's what's so powerful. If I am running, I can transfer my running anointing to my cup. And so all of a sudden, while I'm running, my cup going to start running with me. And, and, and now I'm running and I can't be weary. Why? Because wealth coming, money coming. And a harvest is how God re-energizes. A harvest is how God restores me. A harvest is how God replenishes. 